All right, here we go. Oh shit, I forgot the chair in the middle. Great. Fuck off the chair. Right, hello everyone. Welcome to Random as Poco and I'm the Russian guy and I'm off image. Right, <laughs> so a couple, I think last week, I made the same video in Spanish. I didn't thought it was any good, so I didn't make it in English because I didn't like the end result. But somehow people liked it. They thought it was useful and I did a question there. I said, you know what, uh, send me the pictures of what your play characters look like today. Let's see if you want me to give you maybe some tips or maybe just say, hey, it looks good, it's really nice. And also give me some ideas for my setups. And people really did that. They went on Instagram, sent me the pictures. We talked for a while. Then Nathan wrote me, watched the videos and said, I really like the video, but you know, the captions, the, the, the subtitles that YouTube's give that YouTube gives you uh, by default, uh, sometimes misleading and, and all that, mostly because of my thick Andalusian accent. They don't quite get the sound of the words in the, when I speak Spanish. So, and I told them, you know what, I'm just gonna make the video in English because it's much quicker to just remake it, just re-record it, than me editing and adding the captions and whatnot. So here they are, the five mistakes when setting up a plate carrier for Airsoft. Now, if you watch the previous one, the previous one that I also made in English, it's uh, five things you should stay away uh, when you're buying your first things for Airsoft, your basic equipment, and one of them were the plate carriers. Uh, however, I have several of them. I usually run them when I'm playing, except when, you know, greenside stuff, I just go with a non-ballistic uh, load-bearing system. I also have several of those. And uh, historically, uh, I began playing Airsoft when I was 12, back in 2005. And my first plate carrier, which is a Chinese Cirrus vest, I got in 2015. And I was just fine with it. I mean, I, there's no need for Airsofters to use plate carriers whatsoever. Usually they won't give you any type of benefit uh, there would just be another way of carrying the stuff you want to carry around. So they'll be primarily a load-bearing system. But they're not originally concepted as a load-bearing system. they concepted as a plate carrier. They carry your ballistic plates to protect you from being shot with real bullets in real life. This is Airsoft, we shoot BBs, which is why most of us don't use ballistic plates, of course, because, well, they're harder to get most of the countries, um, much more expensive, heavier, and they're fragile. So ceramic plates, quite fragile, both to impacts of, you know, you falling on the ground or whatever, and oh, from third store building or whatnot, and to the elements. So you can get this from AliExpress for like eight euros, eight dollars, eight pounds, eight monies of whatever currency you have, not if you're running uh, Japanese yens, of course, that will be like 7 million yens or something. I don't know how that is. If you're from, from Argentina, this will be like 7 paychecks for you. Because th those people are having a hard time. So, um, if you're going to use a plate carrier, it's for airsoft. It's mandatory for you to use at least dummy plates. At least. I'm not telling you to use weighted plates, I'm not telling you to use ballistic plates. I'm just telling you to use something to shape that thing. Something to go inside the plate bag to give it the shape it should have. Because these things are designed around them. Right? They're primarily a way of carrying these things. One in the front, one on the back, sometimes two small ones on the sides. Uh, different types of plate carriers, I'll go over that in a minute. And how to position the plate how to adjust that plate is something very basic, but if you are going to use a plate carrier, it's also very important for you to adjust the plate carrier in a way that the plates go where they are supposed to be. Not just for looks, which of course for looks, but also because they are designed anatomically to go around the body, to, to go in specific places, specific elements with that plate carrier, to go in specific positions of the body and will give you better mobility, um, 
will ventilate better because the ventilation is, is designed around the, the way it's supposed to go. And also it won't collide with other uh, pieces of your equipment, like your belt, your backpack, um, your balls. You do have those, right? You don't have to, to play airsoft. I mean, you can be whatever one of the 27 or so genders, but most of us, it's more of a man's game, isn't it? It's sad, it's not fair, but it's a reality. So the plate goes somewhere where your sternum begins, right? Which if you don't know what it is, it's this little bony thing here between your ch in, in the middle of your chest. You can find it by just going and searching for that triangle here. Right, this is the inverted triangle you have on your neck. This is where it goes. And this is the top of that plate. These are medium uh, replicas, of course, of the medium sappy plates, which are the most common. And they have this thing called the swimmer cut that allows you for better movement. So when this plate is located where it should be, it will not give you any problems with moving your arms or shouldering the rifle because that stock will go over here, maybe even more in the center, maybe you want to twist it out a bit, maybe you want to take it. So good for all shooting positions and whatnot. There are different sizes of plates and different types of plates. For example, we have, well, I have medium sappies in here. This is a Defender 2. It has a similar size to the overall plate system. As you can see, maybe a bit bigger, but they're split into two plates. You have an upper plate. Let me show you one. It has an upper plate and a lower plate, both in the back and in the front. So you, what you can do if you don't have any Defender, if you have Defender and you don't have the plates, the dummy plates, you can just cut one sappy in half, preferably a large, Maybe adjust it, maybe get them get custom in whatever place near you works with the spongy stuff. Um, but they also are the, the uh, granite uh, plates, which are the Russian military issued plates, uh, which kind of are similar in size to the sappy large plates, which is why most of the plate carriers uh, from Western manufacturers that I used in Russia are usually going to be bigger ones that can allow for those uh, l size plates to fit, like the 6094 from LBT and all of its copies. Um, all the DCS from Royal Assault Systems. So, yeah, adjust it properly, always run a plate. If you don't want to run a plate, don't run a plate carrier. Go ahead with either a chest rig which you can find many of them cheaper than a plate carrier, usually if they're from the same manufacturer, or just a load bearing system like, like the 6 j 112 that I have here. All the old schooly 80s style, 90s style, LBV, the American one with its LC2 type belt, some Alice pouches on it, and a shitty Chinese butt pack on it. Because these are just made for carrying the stuff. No place for plates and nothing like that. Much more adjustable in size. Just like these are one size fits all. Plate carriers are not. So also a good thing if you're a bigger guy or a smaller guy to make sure it works. Um, I can go and make another video about some of these things. Just, just leave, leave it in the comments. You can check out the older videos that I made in Spanish and say, you know what? This video seems interesting. Can you make it in English? And I'll do it because I want to do that variation of content. So these are the basics. The, the video hasn't even started yet. That's what I do. I, I go over with a big presentation telling you about my life. It's almost two months in confinement. Couldn't cut my hair. I could shave, but I didn't. Um, Usually do this in a suit because I usually wear suits, but now I'm in a goddamn truck suit and it's not even Adidas. The shoes are, however, so that's a good thing. Pretty Russian. Now, um, two of these are gonna be, two of these mistakes are gonna be about loading it. 
one is going to be about the elements that we add or not to it. The other one is going to be choosing the proper function and the, and the setup according to that function. And the last one is going to be more of a tip um, in order to make it look better, especially if you're, if you're on the cheaper side of this world of plate carriers and gear and whatever. Now about loads, um, not all plate carriers are made for the same function regarding load bearing. So we have four types, in my opinion, of plate carriers, and I only have three of them, but the other one is just very obvious. So the more capable of carrying load and compensating that load because of its design are going to be the ones with a cage system or with, an, with a harness system like the CPC and the AVS from Cry Precision and all of its copies. Now these are specifically designed for it. They have this harness system that makes it easier to load them and to bear that load. So it's like combining the load bearing system with the plate carrier in just one unit. I don't own any of them because I don't usually need that much because of course being it airsoft I don't have the weight of the plates so I can play around a little bit. The other type is going to be, uh, sorry, um, uh, second type will be the ones that are specifically designed not just to carry ballistic plates but also to carry soft armor insets like the Defender 2, the Cirrus, etc. So, um, they are better at carrying uh, the load and mixing it up and everything than the others, than the next ones, because since they are made to have that extra soft armor insets, they're going to be wide, I mean, they're going to have a wider construction and, and they're going to have more contact with your body. And specifically, if you go to the Defender, you can see that I have the neck protectors and the groin, so it's just a big bulky thing. It's not meant that way to carry load, but it does help to have that extra, you know, they're more anatomically cut. And this, for example, come in uh, the sizing, not just for, uh, they, they come in size for height and for uh, thickness. So like a 44.5, 40, uh, sorry, 50 slash 5 standard Russian sizing. They're gonna have more molly real estate. Uh, they're gonna have, oh, like, you have molly real estate on the groin. This is a great spot to put uh, an IFAC, by the way. I, I love just carrying an IFAC where your balls will be. Um, as the, the diagonal pouch systems for both Max and uh, maybe a pistol or whatever. Also, the back is full molly. I have this thingy to get strapped. Just the carrying handle added, painted. So most of the older or the um, issued type, um, the military issued type plate carriers are usually going to have that. Then we have the ones that are designed not to carry soft insets, which you can add because there are solutions for soft insets of, of armor for the OBT 6094, for example, but are at least made originally to carry side plates. And what that gives us is a thicker cummerbund, which is more stable than something than just a skeleton or an elastic cummerbund. So it also allows us to have a more stable platform in order to load it. And then we have the, minimalist, the minimalistic plate carriers. Um, this is the RPC from Water Assault Systems, is the one that I'm currently using. However, I already found something to replace it with. And, and it's pretty much very similar to the Cryo Precision JPC uh, because it's just two playbacks, front and back, with some straps on it. I'm gonna come up on. It's not the standard one. This is the one from Ferro Concepts, the Carry Cummerbund, an elastic one with pouches included, which for me is great because I run the radio inside. You can fit mm, mm, AR-15 magazines, AK magazines, uh, and a basic radio handheld like this one, like the Baofeng, and also have the clip system and whatever. It's not a review about, about it, which I will like to make 
someday. So these are made just to carry the plates and the basics. And even in, in the world of the minimalistic plate carriers, I found two types. I found the military ones, which are the ones that have molly on the back and the ones that not like the like the slickster from ferro concepts and its copies that have a slick bag so even less ability to carry stuff uh, why do i consider the military ones to be uh, the ones with the molly on the back or well, because not just for fitting pouches and whatever these are really useful for the antennas of the bigger radios which are then wired to the front or just having the radio there Bridging tools or assault, of, uh, assault of packs if it's an urban situation. So there's usually more demand for that Molly real estate in the back plate than in law enforcement when you're usually working from vehicles and you need that back to be slick. So just it, it's my own thing. It's my own classification around this. I may be wrong, which is why you have that beautiful comment section down there. To correct me, yes. Everybody has to learn something. And I'm the first who needs to learn something. So, first mistake is gonna be discompensating the weight in the front and the back plate bags. It's very effective, it's, it's devastating on the minimalistic. It's usually a big deal and this one's it's bearable and this one's and it's not that affected on the ones with the cage or harness system so what will happen is you have your plate carrier perfectly set up that microphone's gonna suffer Yep, there it is. I hope it stays in place. So, if you don't have that this compensation of weight. So T-shirt got in the way, okay. As you can see, as I showed before, the plate sits where it needs to be. The back plate sits a bit higher because usually you change that position there. Since this does not have any system that anatomically, anatomically adapts to my body to create that shape, even the 6094 does something close because the back plate has this shape and the front plate has this other shape this one is just the same it's just the plate back it's just the fabric to cover up that plate and give you that molly real estate so if you load it up so much for example if i put on mp9 gbb pouches it's gonna go that now i'm gonna have this plate running too low, messing up with the rest of my equipment, and I'm gonna have that back plate too high. Maybe obstructing my view if I'm running the helmet, if I'm moving the head, so it gets in the middle of that back plate. That's, the, that's not the most common mistake, because usually we overload the back plate. Normally, this is to blame for. Big hydration bladders filled to the top. These are two and a half liters, which translates to two and a half kilograms. Love the metric system. If you watch this from the US, you should really give it a try. And what it will do is bring up that front plate up here, right into the neck. So when I'm looking now, it looks like this. It's not a good thing. It looks bad and it's really uncomfortable. Not much to it. Then 
we have the second mistake, which is globally overloading the plate carrier. So it, if you discompensate the weight, it may not be overloaded. As I said, you just might run some hydration and some mags, and it already decompensates. And the best way to, if you're running AEG mags, just don't use big hydration bladders. Either don't run hydration on the plate carrier at all, like I do usually, I use the belt for that. Have a Emerson copy of an is that no. have an Emerson canteen pouch copy of the Eagle, and you can fit two half litre water bottles, a little Naogin bottle, or of course just your regular one quarter canteen. Um, USGI, which I don't recommend because of BPAs, so I stick with the Nalgins or single-use water bottles. It's easier to bear to bear the weight when it's sitting down on the body, because legs will still get um, the weight, but the back and the core body, I mean the upper body and the core of the body won't, so it's much easier. Plus, most of us are more used to just walking than carrying a backpack. So the legs are usually more prepared to carry that weight than the back. So that's overloading again. Now, <laughs> I'm getting a little... Because these two are fairly similar. So play with that hydration to compensate. If you're running GBB mags and you feel that weight, you can compensate it with running some hydration on the back, usually not more than a liter and a half. This is a one liter uh, bladder. Fits perfectly inside the canteen pouch, by the way, so you don't need an extra pouch or to variate that pouch. Of course, they are specifically uh, hydration bladder design one liter pouches, but why have just a pouch with one purpose when you can use the same pouch for different purposes. It's good to have different purposes for one single item. Um, overloading will mean that you add too many stuff to that plate carrier, too many, either too many bulk or too many weight. And that will mean usually, and that will be more important when, if it's a minimalistic plate carrier, you just run the basics because it's the minimal you need to have there. For me, it's mugs and comes. Why? Because the mags are very accessible from up here. This is really the place for them to be. Of course, also here in the belt. And the comes because of the push to talk. So I'm just putting this on, put my helmet on. If I had the radio on the belt, the push to talk on the plate carrier, and the contacts on the helmet, which is obviously where they go, I'd have to put on the belt, put on the plate carrier, connect the, the push to talk to the radio, put on the helmet and connect the contacts to the push to talk. This way I have the push to talk always connected to the radio. I just put this on when I put on the helmet, I connect it. Plus when you're taking the things off, you tend to forget. So that can be, you can break something doing this. That's why I think comms are very good to have here. Also, many plate carriers like the 6094, have not just one but two specifically designed into the common bond radio pouches they can fit either a big ass radio which they do smaller ones of course and a couple of max each so that's a good thing as well and that brings us to the third mistake and it's using unnecessary pouches so we're finished with this one. What should I do? Yeah. They're just so lightweight when you're running <laughs> the dummy plates. LBT 6094. One of the best plate carriers ever made. A titan of the industry. And I'm lucky to have the original one. This is an old generation version. So this has a kangaroo, right? It's a big pouch right in the middle with Velcro inside of it, which you can use or not. You also have Molly real estate. If 
I want to run three mags, I will just get the insert for 10 euros instead of getting mag pouches, which are usually going to be more expensive or less quality. Also, this brings it, it gives that slicker profile, less weight because you're not adding. I mean, these inserts are, I have the other one is for SMG, for 9mm, lightweight, thin fabric, less bulk, less weight, less money. Same as I have here, this is an AR-15 insert, but as you can see, I have AK Max, works perfectly, which is great. Also, just what I said about the radio, you have built-in radio pouches. One side and on the other side, and as I also said before, if you want to have more magazines inside, without adding any pouches to it, you can just go ahead, one and two, and add those magazine pouches, and well, you have this paracord strap, which you just lengthen, because you can adjust these, close it or not. Less weight, less bulk, less money. More efficient way of carrying this stuff around. So as you can see, I have basically all I need, all I usually carry, except for the hydration, without adding any pouches to the 6094. You should do the same. Saves you money and looks like, looks good. Looks peaceful. Then, setting up the plate carrier for the role you have in the game. If you're a sniper and you're running a, um, let's say, VSR-10, the VSR-10 mags would usually fit in pistol magazines. So why do you have your front panel full of AR-15 magazine pouches? Take off the AR-15 magazine pouches put on pistol pouches or just running empty. Just an idea. Because those empty pouches, if they have no use, they have no point. This is the point of, mole, of the MOLLE system, and the panel system, all that modularity you can get. And if you spend the money on the rifle, the upgrades, the scope, maybe even a bipod, you take your time to paint it, everything, you make yourself a ghillie suit, Take your time and just change the configuration of that plate carrier or don't run it at all. Run a belt system, whatever suits you. But adapt that gear to that role you're playing. Also, if you have this big Sotos panel on the back and you're going to have a milsim game when you're going to be in a vehicle, take it off. Adapt the plate carrier to the function you're going to use in, every specific, in, in each game situation. Just like you would do in real life, only thinking back that this is a game, so it's not going to be that big of a point, but it's going to give you that extra comfort, and it's going to look much better. And last, this is not usually a mistake, but as I said, if you're going on the cheap, um, cheapest thing I have here is going to be, well, if you make the big mistake of buying a cheap Chinese plate carrier, when the primary fabric is a camouflage pattern, like I did once, big mistake, it's going to look bad. I mean, just compare the looks. Looks bad. If you run with solid colors, like this MAC panel from Taiwan Gun, 8 fields, I mean, they are good for the price. They are really good for the price. I'm gonna tell you now, but the color is just awful. It shines, it shines. When you have a full plate carrier setup with this color, it's just shouting, made in China. Is it a bad thing to use Chinese made stuff for airsoft? Of course not. It will serve all of us and it will just satisfy most of us. That's why I got this, because I think, well, they work. paint. Spray paint them. I have been doing this for quite some time now. 
every time I get pouches or or just any piece of equipment that looks bad in color, I either use the green paint or the sand paint or both of them. For the rifles, for the accessories, for the plate carriers and long bearing systems. Mm, they're gonna make it they're gonna make everything look the same, same tone. Because you, you're gonna get the pouches from everywhere. You're gonna get them from AliExpress, you're gonna get them from your local shop, whatever. Don't 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 just think that I need to get this perfect tone. And even if you get the same brand, uh, these fabrics, even if they, specifically if they're cheaper, they're gonna have a big color variation, even if you buy the same olive drab or coyote or whatever. So a uh, couple of hands of spray paint over them, you'll get this really good matte look, won't shine, everything will look the same and you're gonna get much more of the looks of it for much less money than just buying everything Gucci. And if you're going Gucci, I'll tell you to go with Multicam because even though they are some, uh, with the original fabric of course, even though they are some uh, variations between the original Multicam fabrics, as of course there will be, being in the camouflage pattern, let's say there's a different brands, different years, you can't tell the difference because the way the camouflage pattern is made, which is why my plate carrier, my pouches, most of them, most of my panels, my belt and most of the pouches of my belt, this for example are painted using the same spray paint, the, the, the Krillon. I'm gonna leave you a link to the Krillon paint in the description from Amazon, they're cheap. Um, I do have this shitty one over here, the holster's not painted, but the belt on or just one pouch over here and multicam. But someday I'll have all the pouches in multicam, I hope. And that's basically, I mean, I do want to make a video trying to come up with the tips to choose the perfect or at least the best plate carrier for you, for each one of you. But I do need some A3 size paper because I it's very important to know what size of plate suits you. This is why I only have the medium sized, but I'm, I'd like to make just, you know, a sheet with, um, a sheet. <laughs> the medium, the large, fold the paper, put it on and see, well, which one is better for me? And also take a look at maybe using the even though I'm using, for example, I can fit large plates inside the 6094, but I'm using the medium ones. They fit, they give it the shape, they're good. You also have MBSS plates, which are even smaller. The granite plates are a bit bigger, different size of plates, but the most common will be sappy large, sappy medium. Well, nowadays MBSS, uh, TMC even replicates the AVS from Cry Precision with MBSS plates. So good choice for smaller guys. Of course, there's a, they're, they're a Chinese manufacturer. They're always going to make things for the smaller guys. Just don't buy the underwear. Won't fit. Some racist there. All right, yeah. Racism. You, you know how I feel about it. More, more of a reflection of how, how bad it is than actually being racist. Plus, it doesn't affect me. It's more of a perk for me, not being Asian. So yeah, the medium plate is smaller, but you can run it almost up to the top. It will still look decent. It, it will give you the shape and it will cover that part of the body because uh, air softers, we're not operators. We don't look like operators, most of us. I don't, at least. And these things can fit us really bad and can look really bad. For example, the elastic Kumabons People told me that, well, you know what, you should get one because you you lost a lot of weight. I lost 20 kilos a couple of years ago. And it won't give you that, the Michelins coming out. The Michelins. We, we call them Michelins in Spain, the love handles and all that. We call them Michelins because, well, have you seen the Michelin guy, the, the mascot of, of the whole thing? I have them all over the place. Fat little fella. 
So I hope it's a bit useful for you, or at least entertaining. As always, you can find me on Instagram, Russo uh, you know, that thingy that goes down crudo. I'll leave you the description. You can send me your pictures of your setups. Um, just uh, go ahead, have fun. If you're in confinement, this is a great opportunity for you to get that plate carrier and see what you can do with that setup after watching it. Just send me the, the before and the after. Good time if you if you can work if they if you legal if you legally allow to work and earn money during this situation, and the clients are not just silent, like happens in my case, uh, you can go ahead shopping. All the money you're saving on pints and um, whatever you would like to do, usually on the outside, you can spend on the glorious hobby that is airsoft. Get some new pouches, get some new panels, maybe go in there and getting that first plate carrier. Everything's building up for when it ends and we can, well, for when it all ends and we can go and play again. Like Nathan, who got his Scar L from Tokyo Marui after uh, speaking with me about it for a while, which I think is great. I hope this, the, my videos helped you. And this is, all, this is one of the biggest points of doing the videos, helping someone, but also learning from other people when I make a mistake. So this is a great opportunity to tell me which aspects of it I'm wrong about. Um, I did a video on hydration. Now that I see all this stuff laying around. I did a video on hydration a couple months ago. I uh, really like doing it because I think it's really useful for most of us since hydration is one of the heaviest parts of the airsoft gear. So if you didn't check it out, go ahead. Maybe if you'd like me to make it in English, tell me so. Because I think it's going to be a great one um, to share. Also because there have been videos from great channels like Garon Thumb, Flanny Daddle, Flanny Daddle? Flannel Daddy. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Flanny Daddle. <laughs> Flannel Daddy had us covered on hydration, mostly hydration bladders uh, for more professional military and law enforcement things, but airsoft is a bit different, specifically when, it's got, when it comes to weight, because ammunition and uh, plates and all the armor stuff, it's not that heavy on a, in, in our world. So hydration becomes a bigger issue when it comes to carrying the weight, how to carry it, how much of it to carry, and everything related. I love this, by the way. I've been using it for two years now. Cheap, extremely durable, BPA free, and you can get it from Amazon. And most operators use them. You, you can see pictures of the, I think it's it was Operation Geronimo, just when they shot Bin Laden. Um, and they, um, they use some of these. They also use the standard plastic bottles which is why I bring them here, always with that blue cap. The blue cap is the most operative thing you can find. So yeah, this is all. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you whenever the fuck I want to make another video. Hasta luego. <laughs> How long was it? I, th I think it was long. Well, at least it was recording. I mean, I could have fucked it all up. Yep. If you're new to the channel, you may be wondering why does they have the two pictures of the random guys on the back? Are, are they dead? Are, are they ghosts? Are they here? Did they die here? Did, did he kill them here? No, they're just a couple of friends. We have a WhatsApp group. And whenever we make a live stream down here and some of us can't make it, I usually can because I live here, uh, we just put up a picture of them. And the stars are from back when my nephews came. And they threw a party in here, and they, th this is the, de the decoration. And I'm just too lazy to put it out. I even have the Halloween decoration for a party I made back in 2018. So, yeah, I'm a lazy guy. Very lazy guy.
And that's it. Bye.